Damn, I thought the Fever won the game. I do a video all hyped about Caitlin Clark's performance and about the, the way that the team looked early in the game. And all of a sudden, the comment section is like, fire sides. Fire sides. Get, get her out of here. She's the worst. I, I got a, a comment from Joe Dale, 1972. said, something happened in this game during the second quarter, which shut CC down. I saw Sides grab CC by the arm as she was walking away from her, and CC was off the rest of the game. You can see it in her face. Don't know what is going on, but something is up. That's the thumbnail of this video. He sent me that that photo, and look, I, I get it. Um, I understand the frustration, the comeback that happened by the, the Phoenix Mercury, but at the same time, I would say pump the brakes just a little bit. Overall, that was very good. Overall, what happened in that game was very good. Yes, there were there moments of frustration. Like, was Caitlin Clark frustrated on this play right here? Clearly, right? You see her coming off the court, and she is frustrated, upset about something that happened in the game. But guess what? That's because she's a competitor. Same thing goes with, you know, Christy Sides and her – they're going to have, I'm sure, altercations in a sense, you know, where they're heated with one another. That's part of being a competitor. I mean, Sides has stated that Clark is the most competitive person she's ever been around. I don't know what else, you know, you would need to see other than that. You know, and, and Christy Sides talked about, you know, the, the game itself afterwards and never having a 30-point um, lead. Since she'd been there, I think is exactly how she phrased it. Let me let me pull up the the post game press conference and, and tell you exactly what Christy Sides had to say. Here is the Indiana Fever head coach that everybody loves so so much. I mean, <clears throat> right now. <clears throat> I mean, that's incredible. And that, that just shows like what we're capable of uh, for me right now, it's given up 36 points in 11 minutes. So that's what we've got to figure out. You know, I don't, I haven't been here when we've been up 31 points. And when you do that, you have to figure out a way to, to hold that and just finish the game. And so that is where as a coach, that's where I'm at, but it's incredible, you know, to have players that can put up those many points and, and be able to rebound the basketball. Um, but that, you know, that that's where I'm at. And everybody blames sides for them blowing that lead. Uh, look, rightfully so. It would be on the coach and and everybody involved when something like that happens. But I've watched basketball enough to see leads like that evaporate often because the Fever had their foot on the gas and they took their foot off the gas. And the Phoenix Mercury played with pride. Kalia Copper, in particular, played with pride. And they cut back into the lead. One of my issues with sides is I've never really heard her take personal accountability for anything. like. And there you have it there again. So that's one of my issues with her. Um, I don't think she's been the best in, in the public speaking role of the job. I, I think she's made some mistakes with the rotations at times for sure. But if we're also looking big picture, this is a much improved fever team than it was early in the year. It is also a team. Everybody was saying she isn't letting Caitlin play her game. She isn't letting pay Caitlin play her game. And Caitlin's playing her game now. I mean, that first half against the Mercury, really through the third quarter, was Caitlin playing her game. Because they were still stunting on him late in the third quarter. It was all the fourth quarter that the lead evaporated in. And you could question, you know, who's on the floor. But I think she's playing the best players now, too. Like, I, I seen all the Erica Wheeler. Erica Wheeler played nine minutes in the game. You know, Caitlin Clark cannot play every second of every game with the ball in her hands every time. That She's going to collapse, turn into dust. You know, you would think as the coach with a 30-point lead, that is a safe time to, to let somebody else take the burden and the load off Caitlin Clark. But if I'm looking at where this team was versus where it is, I can't criticize the coach completely for where it was and then not give her any credit for where it is when you've got Aaliyah Boston and, and Caitlin Clark connecting. You've got Kelsey Mitchell scoring and I know people will say Kelsey doesn't pass every team needs a player like that who's wired to go get buckets she's been great no issues there um you know it's that swing player they need a Laney Hamilton 
or something. That that's the the piece that the the team is missing. But they're getting absolutely historic production from Caitlin Clark, who is generating points at a rate unforeseen. You can check out the link to this piece in the description below. But there there you see she is the system. 232 points scored or assisted on the most in a five game span in WNBA history. Not for a rookie in WNBA history. And sometimes Caitlin overpasses a little bit, which she actually brought up in the post game press conference. She's aware of it. You know, she talked about how she can get too caught up in in playmaking a bit. And, and this was Caitlin Clark on that very topic. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, you know, assists are one thing, but it just feels like how much pride do you take in setting your teammates up so perfectly with the precision of your passes? And just it seems like they're not just assists. They're they're like very special assists in that way. How much pride do you take as a point guard in doing that? Yeah, it's so fun, like just getting to pick apart the defense, especially when like we get stops in, on, on defense and get to go in transition like. I just get excited and like honestly like a lot of my turnovers that's where they come from like just trying to play exciting basketball in transition um but i mean i don't know like at times i feel like i, I can almost overpass because like i want to set them up so badly that like i almost kind of lo lose vision of like the basket at times or like you know i'm almost thinking like to pass the ball and kind of forget about shooting it at times but um I don't know. I think it like it adds a whole other dimension of what the defense kind of has to scheme for is like, you know, I'm going to try to set up my teammates the best I can. But at the same time, I want to be able to score the ball. So the more I can do that, um, the better it's going to be for our team overall. So my biggest critique of Caitlin is when she gets in the in-between area and she doesn't do anything, you know, and pulls the ball out instead of pulling up or, or taking it to the cup. But when it comes to assists, she's going to shatter the rookie record for most assists in a season. And if she's at her current rate, she's going to set the WNBA record for most assists in a season. I'd be very surprised if both of those numbers don't come down, don't fall, uh, barring injury, of course, and don't even want to put that in the universe. So um, Christy Sides, fire Christy Sides. Guess what? If Caitlin Clark doesn't like Christy Sides, she will eventually be gone. That is the power. That is the gravitas that CC has. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, she doesn't want to be seen as a coach killer, I'm sure. But at the same time, looks like Clark's doing her thing out there. Looks like she's not being held back. Looks like she's got the green light to do whatever she wants. And the Fever are playing much, much, much better. Yeah, they blew a, a bit of a lead, but they won the game. Seems like a bit of an overreaction to me after that performance against the Mercury.